What is up, YouTube? Dead Guy Cardboard here. I uh, am back with a 90s insert slash parallels showcase. Um, pretty excited to show some of these cards. I've been busy the last three months picking up some some heavy hitters for my Larkin collection. I think the last video I showed of my small Larkin collection was um, really nothing compared to this. <laughs> um, so here we go. Show the uh, this is the 1995 Larkin refractor from Bowman. You're gonna see a lot of shine in this video. Love the shine. This is the 96 Bowman Atomic Refractor. It's got kind of the original version of a super refractor finish to it. Um, and then the 96 um, mirror image of Ripken and Larkin on the back. It's the refractor version. And then here's the atomic version of the same card. I love these uh, early Bowman best refractors. And this is the 97 atomic refractor. And um, this is the 97 um, mirror image atomic refractor. This is a really tough pull back in the day. Um, the mirror images were a lot harder than the just a single player version of this card. And then there's also an inverted mirror image in 97 where Larkin and uh, Jeter would be in this this little frame. And those cards go for a lot. Those are extremely tough to find. And then we got the, um, I think this is, what is this, 96 Chrome? Oh, 97 Tops Chrome Refractor. And um, I think I've shown this before, but this is the 97 um, Refractor. It's got refract a little bit of Refractor on the back too, if you can kind of tell in the light. And I, um, I bought two of these. I, one was sort of peeling, so I just peeled it off. I've always been curious to see what it would, would be like to peel off these 90s peels. Um, this is actually from the 2000s. This is the 2000 Tops um, NL Team all, t all Tops Refractor. This is a really tough pull back in the day. I don't remember the odds of this, but it was not easy. And then we got the um, 19, what was this, 1995 SPX Hollow View. This is the second year they had the holographic. Um, this is a pretty tough card. Um, uh, 94, they had the die cut version, just the regular version. In 95, they only had the uh, special FX version. So it was a tougher pull to get a holographic card from Upper Deck SP 1995. There, I think you can kind of see it. And then I love this card. This is the the last year they did the the SPX holographic. This is um, from 1997. This is the gold version. This is kind of a tough parallel. Um, the hardest to get is the grand finale, and it looks almost identical to this card. It's, it's gold around here, but the grand finale has a gold finish in the hologram. But um, yeah, I think you can kind of see the hologram. It's a cool card. Um, I think I showed this in the video, but this is the um, the tough 1997. Pinnacle certified mirror gold. Um, the print run on this was estimated at about 30, but I, I think it's more like 50 to 70 because you see a lot more than you would 
expect to have a car with a stated predicted stated print run of uh, 30. Cool card. Um, the real tough one is a totally uh, pinnacle totally certified from this year. Those are numbered. And then these guys kind of stuck in here. These are from the 2000s. This is the 2000 SP out of 100. Pretty tough card um, back then, actually. And then this is from 2001 SP. This is out of 50. This is the same set that the uh, key Pujos and uh, each row card comes from. And um, yeah, if you were to get those cards, the SP limited version of those cards, they would go for like $3,000. Those are really hot cards. Um, this one's also from 2001 SP. I think this is Larkin's, one of Larkin's first um, game jerseys. And this is uh, from 2001 Flair. It's out of 175. And then I had to pick up a Tito 6 card, right? <laughs> this is a Tito 6 Barry Larkin jersey. I like how they had the jersey on both sides. All right, now into the magnetics, the tougher, tougher cards. This card isn't too tough. I just put it in, mag in a magnetic because it's um, it's rarer than most people realize. It's the 1998 um, Tops Club, a Top Stadium Club, one of a kind. These are out of 150. And these these cards are on a lot of people's um, want lists that are um, player collectors from the 90s. And then this one snuck in here. This is from the 2000s, but it's 2000 Omega. This is the copper, which is the toughest version. It um, it's out of 45. See down there. All right, now we're into some of the heavy hitters. This is a really interesting card. Um, it's the 1996 Pinnacle Aficionado first pitch preview. Uh, what makes this a really, really rare card um, is the fact that back in 1996, the only way you could acquire this card is by going on the Pinnacle's website and answering some questions. And then if you answer the questions right, they would send you a random card um, from the set and it would come in the mail and it would have this first pitch preview stamp on it and Back in 1996. I mean no one not, not a lot of people were using the internet. I mean, I, I, re I remember 1996 and it was you know, you would get the AOL um, Internet CD-ROMs where you get like, a, like an hour of free time um, It just a lot of not a lot of people were using the internet back then and especially for like a contest and so there was estimated to be about 50 of these cards produced. However, I don't think a lot of people did the contest, so there's a lot, I think a lot less than 50 of these cards of each player that ever hit the open market. And um, a lot of these cards are chipped because it's a thick card and there's a black backing, and I guess because they were mailed, there wasn't a lot of protection. These are really tough cards, and um, I highly re recommend picking up a card if you have a player in this set. And a good place to find out about if you have a player in the set, I mean it's called Baseball Card Baseball Cardopedia. It's like Baseball Card Encyclopedia. And they lay lists basically all the players from this checklist. And it's a great site too for look up nineties inserts. So a cool a cool card from the from ninety six. One of the toughest promotional cards from the nineties. Another tough card. I love these cards. Um, this is the 1998 Skybox Circa Thunder. And these are out of 150. These were really tough pulls back in the day. Um, these came from like a dollar packs, even maybe even less, 75 cents. And so the print run on these were pretty high. And the odds of getting a, a rave was super tough. And you can tell it's a rave because of the 
the um, the shimmer and the the player's name and the thunder and of course the dead giveaway is the numbering out of 150. There's also super raves from 98 and 99, circa thunder. Those are out of um, kind of, I think it's 25, which are really really tough. But the cool card. And this is a really early version of a Larkin autograph. I think his first autograph was from 97 Donruss Signature. But this one's even tougher. This is from 1999 Skybox Autographics. And this is uh, out of 50. There was a regular version that wasn't numbered and there was a version that was numbered to 50. But um, this is just a gorgeous card. I mean, this I love Larkin's Signature. And um, I would love to open a pack of Skybox Premium. Skybox Premium has a bunch of cool inserts. They have Intimidation Nation, they have the uh, Star Rubies, and then they have this Autographics. I think they have a couple more cool inserts. That was a, that was a cool set back in the day. And then I have, this is from 1998, Leaf Rookies and Stars. This is the Longevity. These are really cool cards. I don't, I, these cards don't give, get enough love um, in the hobby. I think they should because they're numbered to 50, which back in 1998 was really tough. I mean, 98 is the same year that the Crusades came out. Um, and actually, you could, you could get a Donner's Crusade in this, in this Leaf and Stars set. But, um, you know, the Crusades were out of 250, 100 for the purple, and then 25 out of red. This is out of 50. I mean, this is a tough, tough insert back in the day. And actually, there is a 101 of this. If you were to get the one, the first printed card, one out of 50, it has a holographic finish to it. And um, so it makes it, it makes it a 101. I think someone on YouTube has one. I think it was White Triple Three. He has a Bonds longevity to one. So it's a really cool card. All right, now on to the Flare. I love Flare. This is the 1997 Flare Hot Gloves. This is a tough pull back in the day. Just a really cool insert. Um, Flare did Hot Gloves for a number of years prior to this, but the odds of pulling this was a lot tougher than previous years. And then going on to the uh, more Flare. This is the uh, 1998 Flare Showcase Legacy. So Legacy was their um, short printed versions of their Flare cards and they were all numbered to 100. And this is from 1998, um, the second year that they did Flare. Something to look out for when you're buying um, legacies from 1998, especially row zero. This is row zero. They had row zero, one, two, and I think even three in 1998. There was four rows in 1998. But a lot of the row zeros were um, backdoored, and you can tell if it's a backdoored version because this this player name is not embossed. So you can tell mine is embossed. And another dead giveaway is the zero and of looks more like the um, basically the zero in an, like a numbering zero instead of the letter O. So you can tell, it's a little hard to tell, but that's clearly the letter O and not the number O and of. So anyway, really cool card. Maybe I'll just pop this up here. Um, this is the 1998 Row 1. I love this card. I think, so F Flair in the 90s, they did 97, 98, and 99 uh, Legacies. And I think this is the coolest row of any year. The shimmer on this card is just incredible. And you got the, out of 100, Love these legacies. I'd highly um, recommend 
picking these bad boys up. And then we got the 1999 Legacy. This is out of 99. Um, the 1999s, there wasn't, I don't think they were ever backdoored, but um, the names weren't embossed, so this is a real version. So you don't have to work, worry about 99s too much. And then this one cost me a lot. I think I paid way too much for it. But the 1997 Legacies go for a lot more than the 98 99s. So this is the 1997 Legacy, row one. Um, really gorgeous card, but I, I literally paid 10 times the amount that I did for the other Legacies for this one. I think there's a lot of collectors out there for the 1997 Legacies. Um, but this is a really groundbreaking set back in the day because you could actually pull a one of one from this set and um, it's kind of one of the first times that they started doing a different parallels out of a hundred too so cool card and then one of my favorite inserts from the 90s the 1997 credentials so this is the credentials gorgeous looking card has an acetate back this is out of uh, 299. Pretty tough pull. Then you have the essential credentials. This is out of 99. And this is an extremely tough pull. Um, these cards are not cheap now, especially if you get one from a key player or a Hall of Famer. I mean, but they are gorgeous. I love, I think you can see in the light. Yeah. It's kind of see through with the clouds. It's a really cool insert from the 90s. And then, this is the best card in my collection. I picked this up yesterday. Super psyched to have it. The 1999 Flare Brilliance Barry Larkin 24 Karat Gold. This is one of the shiniest cards of the 90s by far, maybe of the 2000s too. And um, the reason why I love this card, other than the fact that it's just a gorgeous looking card is it it's extremely short printed it's um, numbered to just 24 and um, this card was not cheap um, but I picked it up because you never see these pop up especially in the player that you're looking for and um, I think like a month ago I saw it um, bend and I was like contemplating picking it up but I was like I don't know this is a lot of money and then someone swiped it up immediately, and I just regretted not pulling the trigger. And I reached out to the seller, and I found out the, who the buyer was, and I contacted the buyer. And I had to pay a premium for it, more than what, what it was originally listed as. But um, happy to pick this up, because this is a key card for any 90s collectors. A huge card at that. Um, and there's little tips for if you're collecting 90s inserts and parallels. Um, because it's hard to tell like how much you should spend on a card because some of these cards are pretty rare, and eBay only lists um, cards that were sold I think the last like sixty days maybe or maybe three months, and um, so it's really hard to tell like how much a card's really worth. But I found out this site called Worth Point has basically all of eBay's histories of sales. I guess they, they struck a deal with eBay. So they have all the listings you could ever think of for any card. And you can find out like what this card, or what one of these cards sold for in the last you know 10 years. Um, and you can really see how rare a card is, like how often does it pop up. And this card never popped up. I mean, this is a one of one. There's no, any, uh, there's no other cards graded by PSA. It's a mint nine, which is a, a pretty good grade for this card because there's a lot that could go wrong with it like the dimples um, so I just want to give another sh some shout outs too to some some videos I've been watching of other um, people's 90s inserts and parallel collections um, Ghost of Zepho he's got some great Juan Gonzalez collections um, Tops A5401 I think a lot of you guys know that guy Nate loves the shine. He collects Barry Bonds. Um, there's Ben G76 Show. He's got an incredible Fred McGriff collection. I think about a year ago he posted 
each year of his collection, like 1992 through 2000 something. He's got a great showcase of cars. Uh, Lingua Sports Cards, that guy collects just a variety of different 90s inserts and parallels. Um, Aaron Davis, he collects a lot of vintage, but he also collects some Gary Sheffield inserts. Lefty NDV 10, he's got some great shipper stuff from the 90s. And then uh, Weight Triple Three, he's got some great Bonds inserts. I don't think he's posted in a while, but he's got some great stuff on there. But I'm, I'm loving collecting these, these 90s answers and parallels. Um, I'm not going to give up on collecting vintage. I love vintage. I love Tito 6s. But I wanted to change it up. I love learning about new things in the hobby. And um, I highly recommend collecting some 90s stuff. Because the inserts are pretty sweet. And yes, the 90s are covered in junk wax, worthless cards. But these inserts are going up in value. And... Um, they are pretty cool in person. So like, subscribe, and um, thanks for watching.